Hi, my name is Jake Olson. Um, this is going to be my first video, of hopefully many videos, um, of Cakes Kitchen, a, a channel I want to make around eating healthy, living healthy, cooking healthy, and working out healthy. Um, just how to optimize yourself, how to optimize your body for life and performance and things like that. Um, I'm a graduate of Indiana University. I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in health fitness. Um, I'm currently a second year master student in the Public Health Administration program. Uh, master of Public Health would be the degree. Recently, this past winter, I participated in a physique competition. For this competition, I lost 30 pounds in three months uh, leading up to pre-comp. Uh, a lot of people at work noticed that and were asking for what I ate, what my diet is, what my current diet is um, for the competition and, and what I've been doing since then. Um, and I figured the best way to educate people would be putting it in a video where I can take the time to thoroughly explain everything step by step. And I really like the whiteboard, big fan of the whiteboard. So I have it all written out here. We'll just go step by step on what my current diet is. It's currently June of 2019, June uh, 2nd already. It's crazy, time flies. Um, but let's just get into it, go step by step what I eat throughout the day. First things first, 8 a.m. when I wake up, um, we start with some coffee with chocolate milk. Um, a lot of people ask, is there any brand of coffee in particular that's better than the other? Not that I know of. I'm sure there's some organic coffee or, or whatever. I just get the cold brew from Kroger. Um, as for the cocoa milk, that's simply for the taste. Um, I would say chocolate milk is also a very strong muscle building uh, food. But as for my 8 a.m. you know, breakfast time kind of meal, it's really just for taste. Coffee's really bitter. I, I can't do the super bitter coffee. Um, for the actual food I eat, I make an overnight oats the day before every time. Um, what goes into my overnight oats is obviously oatmeal is the base. People ask if I use the protein oatmeal or whatever. I just get your classic rolled oats from Kroger. Um, mixed in with that are chia and flax seeds. Chia and flax seeds are super high in omega-3 and DHA. Um, one of those really strong heart uh, supporting uh, compounds that you typically find in fish oil, but you can also find in chia and flax seeds. Coconut. Coconut is also a really strong um, heart building food. It makes your heart stronger. It's been shown to prevent heart disease and things like that. So I get the unsweetened shredded coconut. You usually can find it in the baking aisle of all places. Um, as for the milk that I soak the oats in, 2% DHA milk. There's a particular brand that I do use that I highly recommend that um, I'll show in a future video. But a 2% DHA milk to mix with the oats, again, high in DHA, omega-3s, uh, this diet. We want to protect the heart. It's not only looking good and living healthy, you want to live a long time. And DHA is one of those kind of anti-aging compounds. Um, collagen. A lot of my guy friends will ask me, you take collagen, uh, collagen is not like a, a hair and skin supplement. One, first of all, men out there, nothing wrong with wanting your hair and skin to look good. But I add 10 uh, grams of chicken collagen supplement to my oats um, to protect my knees. I've had a history of knee surgery. I am a basketball coach. Um, I have a lot of impact on my knees. So collagen is more of anything to protect the knees than skin and hair. But if it helps the skin and hair, that's just not a bonus. The honey is to sweeten it. It's just a drop of honey in the oats and then a handful of frozen fruit to get my fruit in for the day. Um, not really exact on a lot of these. People will ask how much of each. The oats, eight ounces. I always go with eight ounces of oats to start with the base. A spoonful of each of the chia and the flax and then a spoonful of the shredded coconut and then obviously 10 grams of collagen, that specific. But the milk, the honey, and the frozen fruit whatever you think is best. Um, the honey is just to sweeten a little bit, so just a drop. And the milk, just enough to cover the oats. It, it's really not important how much. A lot of your protein in this initial meal will come from that milk and um, your collagen. So a lot of people look at this and they think, wow, that's a lot of carbs. Um, there's really no fat in it and there's very little protein. But filtered DHA milk usually is very high in protein. It's higher than your regular cow's milk. Um, I don't drink soy milk. That's what you're wondering, but um, that's what we go for breakfast every morning. A quick question people will usually ask the times. I label my meals by time. 
people ask 8 a.m. I don't get up by 8 a.m. Um, I get up at 10 a.m. I get up at um, 7, whatever. The time is not super important. Think of this more like breakfast. I have the time label because that's usually when I'm waking up in the morning, but the time's not relevant. You'll see 8 a.m. Let's say you get up at 7 and then you eat at 1 instead of noon. That is not going to ruin you. It's not going to ruin your diet. It's not going to ruin your nutrition. The times are not super relevant. What is relevant is only eating at like specific meals, like not snacking in between. So we're not eating at 8 a.m., we're not eating at 9, 10, then noon, then whatever, so on and so forth. I think it's super important, and I'm a huge proponent of only eating at scheduled times, creating a, a regular times that you eat um, in your life and what fits your lifestyle. These particular times fit my lifestyle for me. Um, big no snacking. I think snacking and not having a scheduled time when you're going to eat that fits personally for you it's how you lead to overeating really quickly. Let's move on to lunch and dinner. So lunch and dinner are almost identical. That's why I put them under the same heading. They're at noon and 5 p.m. I'll outline the changes as we go through them. But we start with one frozen veggie bag. So I'm a huge proponent of frozen produce. Um, frozen produce will never go wrong. It'll never go bad. You know, a lot of time I was buying fresh spinach and it would just go bad over time. I wouldn't use it in time. Frozen will never go bad on you. Um, what I also like, it's already pre-prepared. You just have to throw it in the microwave. And I buy the single like serving bag. So they're already portioned out for one meal. So you don't have to measure anything. You don't have to think about it. I'm not talking about these huge giant bags of broccoli you could buy that would feed you for a week. I think the, uh, the single serving bags are much simpler, um, much easier to keep track of what you're eating. One whole egg, um, should have wrote down, this is also a omega-3 egg. Again, lots of omega-3s in this diet. Um, I cook it sunny side up. Egg yolk adds a lot of flavor, a lot of important um, fats in the egg that we want. We do want the, the DHA, the omega-3s. Um, also, some people have asked me, are you concerned about the cholesterol in an egg? You're eating two eggs every day because I eat this at noon and five. Not worried about the cholesterol in an egg. Um, big misconception about cholesterol your body just flushes out any extra cholesterol you take in. Um, it's not going to affect your blood pressure negatively. One whole avocado with lunch. Uh, we want those fats. Those fats will give us a feeling of being full. Um, and good sources of fat, plant fats, such as avocados or nuts, is just as important to building muscle as protein is. So we want those fats in our diet as well. Avocado is a great source of that healthy fat. So one whole avocado in noon. This is one of the first changes. So it stays the same here until dinner. At noon, you're gonna have a whole avocado. At 5 p.m. when we have dinner, or when I have dinner, you sub out the avocado for a handful of nuts, mixed nuts, salted or unsalted, it doesn't matter. Um, I think mine are salted. Um, a handful of nuts, one, it's also a healthy fat. Nuts also have a good source of magnesium in them, um, good for fighting depression and other things like that, good for fighting hangovers if you consume alcohol frequently. Um, so in the 5 p.m. meal, we sub the avocado for nuts. We then, for lunch and dinner, have four ounces of protein. A lot of people ask, four ounces, that's so specific, what is that? Uh, if you're buying like a package of ground beef, for example, it's just a fourth of a package. That's where the four ounces comes from, it's simple. So just a fourth of a package of protein. Um, people ask me, protein sources, do you just eat like cod and chicken? Well, I do like cod and chicken, I think they're tasty. I'm a firm believer that you can eat any animal um, and still be healthy. There are good cuts and bad cuts of every animal. You can eat a pig in a healthy fashion, an animal that people typically associate with high cholesterol, high blood pressure, or you know, whatever, if you get the right cut of pig. And just like a chicken, people you know, typically associate a chicken with being a healthy animal to eat, there are poor cuts of a chicken, like the chicken thighs are usually a lot higher in uh, fat compared to the chicken breast. So um, the protein is not specific. I would just say a general rule of thumb when you're first starting or maybe first starting this diet is try not to get anything that's lower than 90% lean. So when you go to the grocery store and you buy a package of ground beef, it'll say the percent lean on it. You want to get 90% or higher. Um, 92, 93, typically I get 90%, but get 90% lean of whatever your protein source is. That could be um, beef, chicken, I've been eating bison and elk lately, which I really like. And then 
We mix this all up. We mix all these things together with shredded cheese. Uh, the shredded cheese constantly changes. One thing that will change your cooking game specifically, um, this isn't really a health thing, just makes this taste a heck of a lot better, is try not to buy pre-shredded cheese. So pre-shredded cheese is covered in cornstarch and potato starch. Um, they do that to prevent the shredded cheese from becoming one solid block again and like congealing back together. Um, that takes away a lot of the flavor. If you buy a whole box of cheese and then shred it yourself at the time when you're cooking, you'll just get way more complex flavors. It tastes way better. Um, it's really good. I would always recommend getting blocks of cheese and shredding it yourself over buying like pre-shredded bags of cheddar or mozzarella or whatever. These things are all mixed together, right? So at noon, we have the bag of veggies, one whole egg, we cook it sunny side up, avocado for noon at 5 p.m., we change that to nuts, four ounces of whatever our protein source is, we shred some cheese, we all mix that together, and we eat that up, and that's noon, and or that's lunch and dinner every day. On the side for lunch to drink, I have a glass of chocolate milk again. Um, for dinner, sub that chocolate milk out for a glass of wine. Uh, wine, people ask me, alcohol is an alcohol bad for you. Alcohol is, you know, it lowers your testosterone, it does whatever, so on and so forth. Um, well, when we're drinking wine for dinner, you only want to have a glass, right? Literally, the classic saying, you know, a five ounce serving, literally make it five ounces. Um, the reason we want to have a glass of wine is if you're having glasses of red wine, Pinot Noir especially, which is the highest in the cancer-fighting chemicals and compounds, and also the lowest in alcohol content and sugar, um, a glass of Pinot Noir a day is really good for fighting cancer, really good for your heart. So we're having a glass of Pinot Noir at 5 p.m. At noon, it's chocolate milk. And then for both these meals, we have a little square of dark chocolate. Dark chocolate's great for fighting depression. Um, it's also, again, protects your heart. Um, you know, we, we want to keep that thing ticking for a long time. So I have dark chocolate with both these meals, just a tiny little square. Um, people, common questions about this. Also, chocolate milk, how much? As much as you want, as thirsty as you are. It, it's not very specific. And then they ask how much of the shredded cheese. Again, not very specific, as much as you want, um, as much as it, you know, makes it taste good. And then the nuts, a handful, just a handful. Um, the dark chocolate is literally just one of the pre like cutout squares they have when you buy a brick of dark chocolate. Um, they'll ask people ask what percent cocoa. The highest percent cocoa or cacao that you can handle, I guess, is the best way to word it. I do seventy two. Um, there you can buy ninety and above. You know it can go up, but. It gets really bitter really fast. Like if you've ever had 90% uh, cacao dark chocolate, it's very, very bitter. Um, 72, I feel, still think tastes pretty good, and it's nothing you have to choke down. 9 p.m. This is usually post-workout for most people or right before you go to work. Um, for me, it's right before I go to work, work at a bar. Uh, frozen fruit, 2% milk, Greek yogurt. Mix it up in a, in a, sm a smoothie. For me, personally, a lot of people ask why a smoothie is a half be a smoothie. My biggest vice is ice cream, right? I love ice cream. Um, and one of the things I wanted to avoid when I was preparing for this competition was ice cream. So this mixed together in a smoothie is the closest thing I can get to ice cream. Kind of helps fill that vice. Other things I think fit here at 9 p.m. You can do a banana and peanut butter. Um, I think a whole sweet potato by itself. Sweet potato would work also at 9 p.m. Um, I think uh, any kind of fruit, so maybe like apples, celery, that kind of stuff. Um, another handful of nuts, the mixed nuts that we talked about earlier. It, it really depends on what your craving is. I think this 9 p.m. meal is really important to fill your craving. So I do the frozen fruit, the 2% milk, and the Greek yogurt to fill uh, my ice cream craving. But let's say you crave something fatty, right? Like you crave fats. The peanut butter might be the way to go. Banana and peanut butter. Peanut butter will fill that fat craving. Maybe you crave carbs like pasta and rice and things like that. The sweet potato could help fill that carb, uh, that carb craving. Or maybe you crave something like potato chips, something salty. Um, the nuts would be a really good snack to help fill that craving. This is not a big meal as opposed to these, you know, our larger meals. The 9 p.m. is really just a snack is the way to think about it. Before you go to bed, post-workout, before you go to work, whatever it may be, um, this is our snack for the day. 
something that you don't see on here because it doesn't have a scheduled time, supplements. People want to know what supplements I'm taking. So we have the collagen listed here um, under our oats, which is one supplement I take. It's just chicken collagen powder form. Um, I only take uh, two other supplements, uh, or three actually. I take a daily multivitamin, which I usually have up here with breakfast. Since Mercury is dying. Multivitamin, just a men's daily multivitamin. I buy it from Kroger. Nothing super fancy or unique about it. My other two supplements, and I'm not going to re recommend a particular brand because I think it is, um, I personally think that it's unethical to recommend a particular brand. I want to give you the best health advice. I'm not going to promote any certain brand or anything like that. You can do the research yourself and find a brand for you. Um, but supplements I take, and I'm going to put it in the middle here because it depends when I work out, what time I work out changes from day to day and what my teaching schedule is and my coaching schedule. Um, but I do take creatine, creatine daily, monohydrate, five grams a day. And then I also take pre-workout. Okay. Why creatine? A lot of people say, doesn't creatine make you cramp? It's creatine work. Does it actually make you stronger? Yes, creatine does make you stronger. Creatine is the most proven supplement on the market. It is the most well-researched supplement out of all supplements out there. It's more well-proven than protein powder, than whey protein powder, which is like the gold standard of supplements. Creatine is proven to make you faster, stronger, and jump higher. All those things. But creatine is expensive. It's really expensive. If you are not an athlete or you're not a coach of some kind working with athletes, I wouldn't recommend creatine. If you're just doing this for general health and doing it for um, to live longer, look better, whatever you may have, creatine is not going to help you live longer or look better. It will make you stronger, minimally, tiny little bit, at five, like that final 5%. If I say diet's 50% of what, how you perform, exercise is 45% of how you perform, Creatine is probably that final little 5%. Not going to make a huge difference. I don't recommend it for people that aren't performing in any kind of athletic event of some kind because it's expensive. And you don't need to spend some money on something that's going to make you only a tiny bit stronger. I mean, tiny, tiny bit stronger and not provide a whole lot of benefit. Pre-workout. I take pre-workout simply to help wake me up, get me ready for my workout. It helps you get a better workout in. Um, there's some studies that say there may be compounds in pre-workout that will actually help muscle growth. There's some that argue against it. The jury's still kind of out on pre-workout, but what it does do is it definitely does wake you up. That is not, uh, nothing to question about that. Someone who works late nights, um, pre-workout really helps me hit my workout harder. So these two are the supplements that I take you know, before I work out. Both of them I take before creatine. A lot of people ask before or after. Studies say that it doesn't matter. You can take it before or after. I take it before. Make sure that my pre-workout is just simpler. Um, so the only supplements I take, creatine, pre-workout, collagen with my oats, and then a multivitamin in the morning. Um, if, you, if there are any questions about this diet, feel free to leave a comment. I'm going to leave the macronutrients for the whole diet for the day in the description. Please like the video if you appreciate this information. Um, and please watch my next video as we go through Kroger. Watch me look for these different things and shop. Otherwise, have a great day, guys, and hopefully you reach your goals.